Hi students, welcome back. Uh, this is the exit ticket for today. Um, the data is pretty good. There's 83 of you that have done it. So I contacted your parents if you didn't do so already. Uh, let's look at some of the numbers. Um, what makes the Mona Lisa a true Renaissance painting? The lowest number here is it's secular. Um, the Mona Lisa is a secular piece. That means that it is not religious. Uh, so always remember that, okay? It is, it is realistic. Uh, what did Da Vinci do to master the skill of painting real figures? He studied the human body. He studied the human body. He dissected bodies. Um, he studied muscles. He studied bones. Uh, when comparing the arts of the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, Renaissance arts, um, shading was used. This came from the, from the reading. So if you got this one wrong, it's probably because you didn't do the reading. Okay. So be careful with this. In linear perspective, the further a figure is from the viewer, what happens to these figures? If you look at if you're if you're looking at a field and there's people close to you, they are larger, right? The further away they are from you, the smaller they get. That's what this question is asking. And which of the following are Renaissance works? B and uh, D. Let's look at the end of the questions. B and D are this one. There's a sense of perspective or depth, and this one. Okay. Uh, let's look at the last question. According to the reading, what do the Renaissance artists want to show in their works? The joy in human beauty and life's pleasures. Okay. Uh, today, we're going to continue working on the Renaissance. Um, and I'm going to start getting you ready for your assessments. Um... So most of this, you already know most of this already. One thing that I want you to remember is that the patron of the arts is no longer just the church. It's also, uh, it's also kings and it's also rich, wealthy families like the Medici family in Florence. Uh, classicism refers to the classical period. Uh, people of the Renaissance wanted to bring back this period. Emphasis on human figure, the human form, human beauty. People of the Renaissance wanted to focus on uh, drawing realistic pictures and uh, expression. Now, realism, it, it, there's, it's kind of interesting because it, the pictures they draw are not really realistic in that sense because people don't really look like that, right? It is uh, uh, like, like, like this is what the apex of people look like, very stylized. Perspective, a sense of depth. And today we're focusing about light and shade. You know that... If you draw an image and it's a stick figure, obviously there's no light or shade in there. But once you start shading things in, it looks much more realistic. Um, the one thing I want you to focus on here is idealized beauty. Idealized beauty means um, looking at people in their most beautiful way. Uh, for example, when you look at some of the stats, some of the art, you'll see that most people don't look like that. It's kind of like looking at a magazine today, right? It's idealized. It's idealized beauty in the sense where this is as beautiful as you can be. But most people don't look like that. So this is the birth of Venus. This is a Renaissance picture. Uh, think for a second. What makes this a true Renaissance picture? I'll give you a second to think about it. So the first thing you should think about is this this is a this is a renaissance image for a number of reasons one the obvious there's nudity uh two there's a sense of movement in the hair in the wind three there's uh, a sense of ex facial expression four it is realistic this is what people look like maybe not people that you don't know but if you look at a magazine, right, I, again, it's very idealized. This is what, this is what like a cover of a magazine was back then. Uh, very idealized, but it is realistic. People look like this. He's standing the way people stand. Um, and the last reason is because there's a sense of perspective or background. Uh, these trees look like they're behind this person. Okay, this is a Renaissance work. A lot of you missed this one. This is a Renaissance work. This is by one of the Ninja Turtles, Raphael. Here you see a sense of background. 
background background um yeah this is a renaissance picture and the easiest way to recognize it is because there's a sense of depth we're not going to focus on statues right now but we are going to get to that uh probably next week we did um architecture the human figure became very important during the renaissance uh, artists wanted to rediscover beauty in nature and also human body um This is a very famous picture or famous drawing by Leonardo da Vinci. He was really interested in drawing uh, the human body uh, and studying the human body. It depicts the ideal human proportions described by Vitruvius. Uh, Vitruvius was an ancient, um, uh, I believe he was a Roman scholar. Uh, these are scenes from the Sistine Chapel, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo. Um, again, there's a sense of movement, um, very careful detail of the human body. One of the biggest changes in art was to paint realistic images because now we're painting for the sake of painting, not to teach people a message, only to teach people a message. Um, again, we're going to focus on architecture later. We've focused on this already. Medieval, Renaissance, much more realistic, sense of perspective or background, sense of emotion, more flat here, unrealistic um, angels stacked on top of each other. Perspective is the drawing of pictures that look uh, three-dimensional. Again, the further a character is, the, um, the smaller they tend to get. Uh, this dot here is called the vanishing points. I talked to uh, Miss Lewis about maybe doing an artwork for, um, for art. Vanishing point here. Um, again, this is much more realistic, right? You can see the rib cage. You can see the neck. You can see the expression. You can see the expression here. This is a uh, epitome of Renaissance work because it is much more realistic. It's not a flat picture. You can tell that the head is on, on that side and the feet are on this side. You can even tell the crevices on the feet. You can tell the wrinkles on the clothing, right? It's much more realistic than what we've seen in the past in the medieval period. Uh, the, the smile, right? Um, of the Mona Lisa. Light and shade. Renaissance painters use light and shade to add perspective or add emotion. Chiaroscuro refers to light um, and and um, uh, and the use of shading to create a more natural view of the of the painting. Tell me if these are Renaissance and why. No, doing that. Renaissance or medieval? This is medieval, much more flat, um, not really realistic. Renaissance, much more realistic. Uh, you can see the creases on the clothing, there's a sense of emotion. Renaissance or medieval? Renaissance, there's a sense of emotion. There's a sense of movement. There's a sense of perspective. It looks much more realistic. I believe this is by, by Da Vinci. Renaissance or medieval? This is Renaissance, a uh, sense of movement. There's nudity, there's a background. Again, I don't want you to think that the nudity is just for nudity's sake. It's because people of the Renaissance value value science. They value the human body. They value human expression. They have, value human life. And, and they see this as being part of um, the human story. Um, I have a document that I want to share with you guys. Uh, there's a couple things that I want to go over with you. Okay. Um, at the end of this, uh, you are going to have a couple questions. And I'm going to give you a picture, an image that you've never seen before. And I want you to tell me why is it medieval or why is it renaissance. Okay. Um, right now, we're going to focus on a couple of them. This is realism. 
the study of the human body, right? It's very kind of like what we do today in medical school, studying how the body works so that we can understand it better. In the Renaissance, people under, study the, re, the, the human body so that they can understand how it worked, but also how to draw it better, how to draw a more uh, an, anatomically correct image. These are by Da Vinci. Uh, this is by Da Vinci as well. Um, much more realistic. Now, there is no background on this. Does that mean that it's medieval? No, it's, but it's much more realistic. This is also a secular piece. This is not a religious piece. If you zoom into her hands, you're able to see that he actually took some time understanding how these fingers look. In the medieval period, this might just be like one stick, right? There might not be this knuckle here. So that is realism uh, and the study of the human anatomy. Um, there were great advancements in science during this time. The scientific method was created in England at this around this time. Um, many different scientific discoveries were made during this time um, that we still uh, value today. Perspective, again, perspective is the sense of depth. You can tell this wing is behind this wing. You can tell that this wall is in front of these people. You can tell that just by looking at the shading here, you can tell that this is behind, it's in front of this right here. Uh, this one is a good example of perspective. You can tell that these people are behind this, these people because they are further back, right? And because they are smaller. You can tell that this building is behind these people because of the use of these, uh, these I don't even know what those are, next like steps. So again, this one is perspective, a sense of depth. Spumato, we're not gonna spend much time on this, but spumato is, is like shading. Uh, it's like a smokiness provided uh, to the image to make it much more realistic. Uh, something developed by or used by Da Vinci. Emotion and movement, we talked about this already. There's movement here, there's emotion here. Uh, this is one of the, um, one of the drawings or paintings by uh, Michelangelo, this is the moment when, when Adam and Eve are kicked out of the um, Garden of Eden, I think the Eden, uh, because they have sinned and they realize that they're nude, they're in pain. This is a perfect example of Renaissance, uh, Renaissance art because it does show the human emotion of pain and, and uh, embarrassment. Okay, to summarize, the Renaissance was a huge change from medieval for a number of reasons. Uh, art became much more realistic. Art became more secular. There's a sense of movement and a sense of, um, of emotion. And there's also a sense of perspective on a lot of its arts. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be focusing on um, sculpture, and we'll finish with sculpture, and then you'll be assessed next week. I will be giving you guys uh, and girls uh, works, and you will have to define, understand what are they and why. Uh, you won't be able to Google these answers, so try your best. I miss you guys all. Oh.